Across the country, diabetes is an epidemic with a new case diagnosed every 17 seconds. In the African American community, the statistics are even more alarming, with black adults a whopping 77% more likely than non-Hispanic white adults to be diagnosed. And for kids, it's even scarier. Death rates for black children with diabetes are more than twice as high as those for their white peers and more than three times higher than those for Hispanic children. Yet, over the last 30 years, there's been a tremendous amount of research that's shown that type 2 diabetes can be decreased or even reversed simply by making lifestyle changes, like adopting a whole food, plant-based diet. In Chicago, a number of restaurants are committed to ending lifestyle diseases like diabetes and revitalizing the health of the predominantly African-American Southside community through tasty, plant-based soul food. One of the oldest and most beloved is Soul Vegetarian. Really, really good. Soul Vegetarian is a vision of food out of the minds of African people that's healthy for all people. It is our contribution to the world of health. When we realize that African Americans particularly were dying from preventable diseases that were mainly diet-based, we realized that we should do something about it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Have a and so Soul Vegetarian was born out of the desire to eat healthy, to be healthy, and to stay healthy. You see, everybody puts a lot of love and care into what we do. Chicago's Soul Vegetarian Restaurant is a family-owned and operated business with plenty of hands to stir the pot, even though the first generation didn't grow up eating just veggies. I'm from the South and uh, grew up eating a lot of vegetables because my grandparents had farms. After my husband became a uh, part of the Hebrew Israelite community, we changed our lifestyle and changed our way of eating and living. So it's been about uh, 28 years that I've been vegetarian. Though making a lifestyle change towards a healthier, plant-based diet seems like an obvious choice, for many people, giving up meat and dairy feels like an impossible task. For those in the African American community, soul food has played an essential role in black culture since the inception of slavery in the United States, and is still integral to the black experience especially in the black church. For Reverend William Lamar. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Pastor at the historic Metropolitan AME Church in Washington, DC. It's personal. But uh, they can call me really early in the morning and I'll make a, a visit after the 11 o'clock worship and I've done what I need to do. It was a devotion and dedication to those words that helped our ancestors to imagine that we could be something more than we found ourselves in the conditions here in the United States of America. You know, when I look at the medications on the table, uh, I'm thinking very soberly about the fact that if I can do something to aid my body and my body's abil ability to heal itself, mm -hmm. then I owe it to myself mm -hmm. to try that. Right. I owe that to myself. I owe that much not only to myself, but I owe it to my family, to my ancestors, to, the, to God who's given me life. Yep. I, I, I owe yep. that. You have high blood pressure, 
You have hyperlipidemia, the three major causes of heart disease. That's a lot of medicine. It is. We need to get you out of this medication as soon as possible. You want medical freedom. You want a health that is so good that you go see you, me if you want, or your primary care physician every year and say, okay, Mr. Reverend Lamar, you're impeccable. Your hemoglobin A1C is 5.6 because that's where I want it. This is too high. It's going to damage. You remember diabetes over the years damage your eyes, damage your kidneys, damage, you know, the genital functions, damage the People get amputation because it damaged the micro and micro situ uh, circulation. You know, when you're diabetic, by definition, it causes heart disease. I want you to understand from the beginning that these drugs put the numbers in order, but they don't necessarily address to the physiology of the disease. So you might be taking all that and, the, and the, the continuum of the pathology of diabetes, high blood pressure, hyperlipidemia, is continuing to damage the system. Mm -hmm. So to take the drugs might be good momentarily, but my, when a patient like you come to see me with the three major American diseases, you know, I want to take you out of that. Mm -hmm. And by changing your lifestyle, because trust me, you don't have a deficiency of all this, right? Your lifestyle needs to be adjusted. All the people that have been looked at that do plant-based diet have less chronic disease, including the cancer. So the key is to adjust the diet, not the drugs. What was your hemoglobin in one stage? The last, it was 8.8. .8. Oh, okay. So uh, we're going on to a plant-based diet, I think, is where we all should be going to. <laughs> To kickstart Reverend Lamar's plant-based diet, he spent the day with our resident chef and nutritionist, Michael, who took him grocery shopping for plant-based alternatives to meat, dairy, gluten, and refined sugar. So ginger ale is my favorite. Uh, mm -hmm. It's definitely the best tasting in my personal opinion. Then, he gave him some tips on how to stick to a plant-based diet when eating out. So immediately right here, all four of these things I could get. So I would just do a big plate. I'd say, okay, give me the guacamole, give me the refried beans, give me the, uh, the vegetarian refried beans, Mexican rice, and the plantains. So all of that, the guac, the yeah. refried beans, the rice. Right. A lot of times, if you just ask them and say, hey, I'm not eating meat, I'm not eating dairy right now, can the chef hook me up with something? The chefs go off on that. It's surprising. Michael showed the Rev a delicious way to get his daily dose of greens with a sweet, protein-rich detox smoothie. So I make cookies to everything you need to make, and you use, instead of using eggs, you use flaxseed. Okay? So anyway, we'll add two tablespoons of this. Nice and green. Just gonna put a strip of bacon in there, man? Um, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Cheers. Peace to your health. It doesn't taste the way it looks. Mm. It looks like, oh my God, it's so nasty, it'll be like the worst out. No, but it actually tastes really good. Far from that. Mm -hmm. After nearly two and a half months of successfully adapting to a plant-based diet, Reverend Lamar went back to see Dr. Mines for a checkup and to see the results firsthand of his updated blood work. So what we can see here with you, what you had done um, three months ago, you had an hemoglobin A1C of 8.8, .8, and today is 6.4. So this is, a, in three months, this is just awesome, okay? You know, so the hemoglobin A1C is still gonna lag beyond, because remember, it's an average. 
Of three months. Yes. Okay. So because you have really moved from a different category, now you, you're approaching the pre-diabetes, and, you know, below 5.7, you would have gotten rid of diabetes. So you would have reversed your pathology. So the key now is to continue on the plant-based diet because, you see, it's working for you. Okay? Now, when I look back at your older test, your blood sugar, spot sugar, was 258. Okay, so we see already that, and this morning is 121. So we already see that your sugars, spot sugars after a meal have already decreased. So looking at here, uh, sir, is looking that two weeks ago, you know, the glycomark is, is normal. So the more you're getting to, to a closer mark for today, we see that your blood sugar have been normalized. 